Okay, thank you very much. We're here talking about opportunity zones and other things having to do with economic development and also the inner cities. And Tim Scott, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, has been with us on Opportunity Zones from day one. He first approached me and he mentioned it, and I love the idea. And who knew it was going to be so successful, Tim, right? Tremendous. So thank it's, you for your support. Well, thank you for your support and for your knowledge. And uh, if I might, I'd like to have uh, Tim start off by saying a few words, and then uh, Scott Turner, Executive Director, has done an incredible job. And Scott, uh, would like to hear from you, too. Okay? Thank Tim, you. please. Well, thank you, sir. And Mr. President, thank you for your commitment to all Americans. And truth be told, your commitment has gone beyond the voting booth. You're, you're helping people because they're Americans, and you don't care whether they're Democrats or Republicans, whether they're black or white, whether they're up or they're down, whether they're rich or they're poor. Your focus is making sure that America is healthier as we come out of this COVID-19. And I thank you personally for your support of all people, but specifically to the underserved community. And what we have before us today, sir, is a way for us to improve the economic outcomes, to improve the health outcomes, and in the long view of what we think is in the best interest of connecting people to the opportunities that will change their lives. And from an economic development uh, perspective, I always think about capital and competency. The more access to capital you have, the more competent you will be long term. And it, the way that we have put structured together really provides people with more access to capital. The PPP has been a classic example of improving and expanding access to capital in such a way that businesses continue to succeed. Health outcomes, there are a myriad of ways of talking about it. I like to think about it from a, a testing in telemedicine, testing in the most vulnerable communities. Uh, I think the emphasis has been on the nursing homes. We've learned a lot right. about that. And then those communities that have two or more health conditions, right. underlying health conditions, right. we see the highest hospitalization with our senior population, as well as those folks with two or more comorbidities. <coughs> And so as we focus on testing and telemedicine, we're creating access in the rural parts of our country in a way that we have not before. And you have led in, in with real force on that topic, and I truly appreciate that. And on the last one, the long-term structural change, I look at it from a connectivity perspective and choice perspective. So the connectivity, broadband being incredibly important, I've heard you talk about that a thousand times, if I've heard you talk about it once. And then from a, uh, a choice perspective, whether it's charter schools or, or school choice, right. we have an opportunity to continue to change lives. And you've led on all those fronts. And I think we're going to see tremendous impact. And certainly my baby, of course, is Opportunity Zones. Right. You have been front and center. And uh, I'm sure Scott's going to talk a lot about Opportunity Zones. But you have assembled the kind of firepower that our nation needs at a critical time. It's one of the reasons why we're going to have a V shape as we hit August, September, October, and November in this economic recovery? Well, I think so. And uh, you're seeing it maybe today for the first time where uh, not only are the markets up tremendously, but yes. we've had tremendous, uh, tremendously good and positive information on therapeutics, on cures, and on vaccines. Yes, sir. From some of the most respected companies in the world and uh, researchers and doctors and labs. And that's coming in. And I think uh, you're very close to having a very, very positive situation. And, uh, you know, with, with it understood, and we always talk about it, Tim, when you lose one person to this, it's too many, just it's, too many. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about thousands and millions of people throughout the world on something that should have never happened. Absolutely. Should have been stopped in China, should have been stopped at the source, but it happened. But they're coming out with tremendous, uh, it's incredible what they can do, and I've seen results. Absolutely. And the results are staggeringly good. So I'm very happy, and the market's up very big. And I think you're going to have a V. I think it's going to be terrific. I think we're going to have a transition in the third quarter, Ben. Mm -hmm. And the transition's going to lead to a really good fourth quarter. And I think we're going to have a, a year next year because of all the stimulus and everything else and the pent-up demand like you haven't seen at all. Oh, my goodness. 2021 is so, going to be amazing. And the stock market's not very short of where it was with all that we went through. It's uh, And that means... A lot of smart people are looking and they're saying we're coming back and we're coming back to that level. I think we're going to come back to greater than that level. And we've learned a lot. One of the things we've learned is be reliant on ourselves. Don't be reliant on other countries and, frankly, maybe have different agendas. And, uh, frankly, there are plenty of them out there. So it's one of those things. So uh, 
This is a very big day. This feels much different than Friday. Friday is a different feeling than today. This is a very positive day. Uh, ben Carson, would you like to say a few words? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, redirecting us. You know, it was three weeks ago when uh, you said the, uh, the White House uh, Opportunity and Revitalization Council should refocus, not get rid of, but add to its plate focusing on those individuals who are disadvantaged uh, and, uh, and who have suffered the most. And uh, I think this uh, epidemic that we're going through right now focused the light on the fact that there were some people who had significant disparities that put them at increased risk uh, for the disease. And so you asked us to really get to the bottom of that. And it's not just the fact that people have hypertension and diabetes and obesity and asthma. It's the things that create an atmosphere where those things flourish. Right. And uh, so we've been really concentrating on getting at the underlying causes. And I think, first of all, you know, uh, between myself and, and Jerron, Jared, and a few others, we've talked to hundreds of thousands of stakeholders. Yeah across the country in various communities to find out from them what their perspective was, particularly in terms of the, of the CARES Act and how it was impacting them right. and what could be done differently. And we have discovered some things uh, which uh, we are in the process of correcting. Uh, some of it will require legislative help and uh, you know Senator Scott is all over that. So I think that's going to get done. And uh, the staff uh, in all the agencies. You have 17 uh, different agencies and uh, councils who have been very much involved. Uh, Secretary DeVos has been very involved, particularly with the education, the Good. broadband. Good. Uh, the fact that this whole uh, pandemic has changed a lot of things, but we are looking for positive ways to take advantage of that, for instance, with education. Now, it's going to be possible to take the best biology teacher and put them in front of a million students instead of 30 students. So a lot of those people who were not getting a good education, we do this the right way. We can provide an excellent right. education for them. Same thing for workforces. So we're looking at ways that we can take advantage of all these things. And this has been done very rapidly. Three weeks ago, <coughs> you asked us to do this. And I just want to thank all the people who've been involved, all the primaries and the various agencies. Everybody has been incredibly responsive. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be fun. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Good job, Jim. Thank you very much. Scott Turner, would you say yes, a little sir. bit about Opportunity Zones and how that's all going? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. President, I want to thank you for the opportunity to uh, really to not just be a part of the team, but to lead and to shepherd um, the White House Opportunity and Revitalization Council. Uh, we were with you last in December when we handed you the one-year report, and uh, now we are at a point to where we have a very strong foundation because of Opportunity Zones. And uh, as you know, we travel to over 60 cities uh, across the country to convene stakeholders from the community, from businesses, education, faith leaders, elected officials, to convene at a table just like this to talk about, hey, what is the pain of the community and what is the promise and the potential of the community? And those uh, convenings have have proven to bear a lot of fruit and given us really what we need from a partnership standpoint, from a coalition standpoint, and from a foundation standpoint now that we can go by your leadership and refocusing the council to go and implement these policies um, that we see here before us in our country. As you know, distressed communities uh, generationally uh, have been behind and now with the COVID and the recovery, you know, they have been severely hit, but we're not discouraged from it, pre Mr. President. We are not um, discouraged. We're not wavering because we know that we have a strong team. We have great policies and with your leadership and administration. And Dr. Carson, Secretary Carson alluded to the agencies that are on the council. And everyone is passionate uh, and compassionate about not just helping but seeing our citizens across America in distressed communities thrive from an entrepreneurship standpoint, from an economic standpoint, and really the spirit of this law. And, and Senator Scott, thank you for your leadership, economic development and community social impact. And that's what's been going on across our country. Yes, COVID is here, but our mission and the spirit is still the same. And now we're just going to wrap it up, Great. you know, and keep going. Great. Thank, thank you, Scott. You're welcome. Hey, Mr. President, this 
this is yeah, that's the best practice. Best practice is it shows you what's going on in all the opportunity zones. It's absolutely astonishing. Very good. It's very entertaining reading, but you'd be amazed at what's going on. That's good reading. Look at that. Yes, that's good reading. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just see something. Yeah. Sixty-seven pages like that. I don't know. I'm not sure, Brooke, if I'm going to get to read all of it. I'm going to try. Yeah, very stimulating. I'm going to try. Sure. Uh, Brooke, you have a few words. Congratulations, you know, think, by the way. Oh, Mr. President, thank you so much. I think it's really important to note that just two and a half months ago, at the end of February, we were celebrating, I think, African American History Month. And we had over 800 African-American leaders from around this country, of course, pre-COVID. And we, you stood up in front of that group of men and women, and you talked about that in just a few years, we had the lowest poverty rate in the history of our country for our African-American population, our Hispanic population, our veteran population, our uh, high school graduate population, our uh, people with disabilities. It was a remarkable time. And to be able to sort of celebrate that without knowing where we would be 10 weeks from that day. But now we know where we are. And looking back at what you were able to do with this country and lifting the forgotten Americans who are forgotten no more. Now they're in a tough spot again, but this is what this effort is entirely about, led by Dr. Carson, Senator Scott, uh, and, and Scott Turner. How do we bring that prosperity, not just back, but to even greater heights than it's ever been before? I know you like to use the transition to greatness, and I think that's 100% accurate in this case, and this is what this entire effort's about. So thank you for convening Good. this. Thank you for the redirection. I know we're all really excited. We'll bring it back. Yes, we will. We'll bring it back. Yes, we will. Uh, Larry Kudlow, please. Uh, just to add to what the others have said, I think it's a great project backed it wholeheartedly since the beginning. And Brookie mentions the, um, the low poverty rate we had before the virus struck, and the low unemployment rate, and the low unemployment rate. And one of the things I love about this initiative is we can spread prosperity and opportunity to every corner of the economy, every single corner of the economy. Those who are underserved, those poverty pockets, we can attract capital. We're going to use private investment capital as the linchpin of this, and they will be rewarded uh, in a number of different ways. So again, we rebuilt this economy, mm -hmm. all right? We got hit by the virus, we rebuild the economy again. Mm -hmm. And you know what, sir, besides the stock market, there are little glimmers. I don't want to downplay the heartbreak, because the numbers are not good for this quarter. Bad, bad pandemic contraction. But there are little glimmers a lot of the unemployed are temporary. We're seeing evidence that gasoline demand is higher, that the Apple mobility charts are higher. That means more people are uh, driving. We've seen the uh, New York State manufacturing survey uh, rise substantially. So there are little glimmers of, of hope things. here and there. A lot of happening. Oil is yes, sir. back up to a point where the energy industry is going to be uh, maybe in very good shape yes. very soon. Mm -hmm. So a lot of very important things are happening. And then the stock market sees it. Yeah. And that's why the stock market's up yeah. so big. So it's very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you all very much. Thank you.